Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Following on in 2 Timothy, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, King James Version of the Bible. In today's video, this evening's video, I guess I should say, we're going to put some silliness that's been going around on the internet to rest. There are those that have cherry-picked the Bible and have not done the hard work of rightly dividing what the Word of God actually says. What is that silliness? Well, it's this synagogue of Satan nonsense. This idea that somehow people have transliterated in their anti-Semitic minds that somehow the current people living in Israel, God's chosen people, are somehow a synagogue of Satan. It is a ridiculous assertion, and it is easily disprovable just by doing a little bit of homework. Now, real quick, as always, biblical values first, gratitude first. Thank you so much, all of you who have joined us over at the Patreon channel. We got a brand new video up there, uh, just a little over a day old. I think you guys would really appreciate it. There are videos over there, hundreds of videos over there that are only available over there. Going back 2019, I mean, literally, we've had this channel, this Patreon channel now for almost four or five years. And there's hundreds and hundreds of videos that nobody here on YouTube has ever seen. A great deal of very important information, all available for only $1 a month. That's it. $1 a month. Just enough to trip the censors. And even if they would make it through to Patreon, they'll never get past Vimeo. That's a private server that's also not free. Would love to have you over there. It's even less than a dollar a month if you sign up for an entire year fully refundable, first 90 days. There's a $1 level, there's a $5 level. Pretty sure the next video that we're going to be putting up is for the $5 folks. There's only a handful at that level, at that $5 level. The vast majority, hundreds of videos, are all available for a dollar a month. Those of you that have joined us, God bless all of you. Thank you so, so much. I very much appreciate it. Now, real quick, right off the bat, why aren't most Christians out in their backyards right now building arcs. <clears throat> Why weren't they doing it 20 years ago? Why weren't they doing it 120 years ago? Well, Florida Maquis, that's kind of silly. When you read the Bible, God instructed Noah to build an ark at that time for a specific purpose, in a specific way, for a specific reason. Just because God told Noah to build an ark He's not telling us to build all go out in our backyards and build arcs to the size and standards that he told Noah. So there are things in the Bible that are information that's given to people in the Bible at a specific time for a specific reason. Now that's critical going forward with this whole synagogue of Satan stuff because what these liars are doing is they are trying to justify the hate in their hearts. The scriptures they're talking about are two very specific ones. Most only know of the one. There's Revelation 2 and Revelation 3 where this is talked about. And it's John the Revelator talking to the churches of Asia. That's all that's going on. And he is talking contemporaneously, meaning way back 2,000 years ago, to the churches of Asia at that time. If you want to see who the synagogue of Satan is, it's actually in the text. This is your synagogue of Satan right here, and I can prove it. Now, the first thing you have to understand is that the New Testament is written in Greek. Greek and English don't always play well together in translations. I was a Spanish linguist in the military. Before that, I had had five years of French. And while French and Spanish and Italian and Portuguese all do a fairly good job with English, not always, but Greek, Greek is a very, very different language. 
And sometimes things are said that mean exactly the opposite. Now, John, in exile on Patmos, was instructed by the Holy Spirit to write by an angel, I guess I should say, to write these letters to Pergamos, Thyatira, I hope I got that pronunciation correct, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea, Ephesus, and Smyrna. Now, at this time, these were referred to as the churches in Asia, modern-day Turkey, but really, they were Greek. Now, try to wrap your mind around all that. The first time this reference appears is in Revelation 2, verse 9. Now, what you're looking at is a blue-letter Bible with the concordance numbers up. All these numbers, all these codes, every word that appears in the Bible that you see in English has a Greek equivalent because they had to translate the Bible from Greek. So when we look at this particular line they talk about, I know the blasphemy of them which, G3588, say they are, pay attention to this little three-letter word are, A-R-E, G1511, say they are Jews, and are, G1526, not. So the word are, A-R-E here, is one word in Greek, G1511, and this word are, A-R-E, translated in English, is a whole different word in Greek. That should tell you all you need to know right there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why wouldn't A-R-E just be A-R-E? Why wouldn't R be R? It's, it's a verb. It's a very simple, why, why would it be? You see, the Greek language is far more specific than English is. English is very narcissistic in the sense that everything is in context. There, there are words that are pronounced differently and spelled the same depending on how you're using them at the time. And there's no, no hard and fast rule. Revelation 3, 9. Once again, behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are, G1511, Jews and are, 1526. So it's confirmed twice that this isn't saying what people think, think it's saying. Now, I went through and I transliterated all of this. And basically what it boils down to is this. That second version of the word are, A-R-E, does not mean what we think it means. What this translates to is when it says the blasphemy of those who um, say they are Jews and are not. What it really means is the blasphemy of those who privately profess Judaism, but when confronted outwardly, they behave in a secular manner. That what makes that the synagogue of Satan, basically they're liars. Basically they'll say whatever needs to be said to achieve their ends. Like Takia, who remembers Takia from Islam, where they're allowed to lie and deceive and say whatever they want in the furtherance of their goals. Now, in the second, in the three nine, in the in the pardon me. In Revelation 3, 9, it says at the end, and are not, but do lie. G235, G5574. That translates. Literally, this is how it is pronounced. But are the synagogue of Satan, literally is pronounced, Allah, synagogue Satanus. But lies, behold, is Allah, Sudamai, Idu. That's right. Both of those lines begin with the word Allah. And I'll give you this li these links, and you can look this up for yourself. I went through all of these. And the word that we're going to look at very closely is this word, this G1526. That second A-R-E, this is how it's used from Matthew 2 and 18. In Rama, 
was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. Wait a minute, monkey, wait. Are they her kids or are they not her kids? That's confusing. This use of what we call the word are means they were, but they are no longer. In this particular case, she is weeping and mourning the loss of her children. It doesn't mean that they aren't her children. They just are no more her children. So what was being talked about there in both of those scriptures in Revelation 2.9 and 3.9? And it's literally the definition of blasphemy. Someone who isn't, someone who is secular would never pretend to be a Jew. Especially at that time. Jews were um, run out of everywhere. They were attacked. They were persecuted. They had all sorts of problems. Nobody would, nobody at that time, when John the Revelator was writing these letters to the churches in Asia, nobody would have ever pretended to be a Jew. No one would have ever pretended to be. He wasn't talking about the people living in Israel right now, 1948 to 2023. What he was talking about was those who were privately privately professing to be Jews. They were privately Jews, but when confronted for the ease of the flesh and to make their life easier, they behaved in a very secular way just to kind of get along, which is the very definition of blasphemy. Now, who remembers the song? I'm sure a lot of you are like, wait a minute, where have I heard this before? Remember the song from Mike and the Mechanics? Can you hear me running? Can you hear me running? Can you hear me calling you? Swear allegiance to the flag, whatever flag they offer. Never hint at what you really feel. Teach the children quietly. For someday sons and daughters will rise up and fight while we stood still. Now in the secular world, for rebels, I suppose that's somewhat honorable. But if you're going to deny Christ, remember the scripture in the Bible before the cock crows, thou shalt deny me three times. Remember that? That's what's being said here. They were Jews. They were actually Jews. They were God's chosen people then. They are God's chosen people now. But there were Jews at that time who were privately practicing Judaism, but outwardly did not confess it because it made their lives harder. And they would persecute other Jews who were outwardly practicing because they thought they were making life harder for everybody. See, this is what happens when you don't understand language and how language changes over time. And you also take things out of context. Greek and English are just not real well suited. One of the most common, I'm sure a lot of you know, about the word love. We hear in English, in in the English language, have one word, love. And the Greeks have, I forget how many, seven or eight different words. One for brotherly love. (coughs) Pardon me, one for brotherly love. One for romantic love. One for um, camaraderie. Between those aren't, I mean, one that you could probably use to describe up your favorite food. All different words, we use one word. And when we look at these these translations, we can see they're using two different words for the simple verb are. G1511 and G1526. And I find it very odd, this, this word but or however or exception to G235 is pronounced Allah. Let's see if I can find it. G235, Allah. And right after, synagogue of Satan. But nevertheless, notwithstanding an objection and obstruction, an exception, a restriction. 
synagogue. And by the way, there's also a difference. There's also a difference. Synagogues are not like churches. Synagogues were places that the Jews went to teach. They were schools. They were places of learning. Jews go to temple for sacrifices. Temples were for sacrifices. Synagogues were for teaching. We, in the Christian end of things, don't have a distinction when we, we have a building. Our sacrifice was given a long time ago on the cross, so we don't, we don't have any, any need for, for any further sacrifice other than crucifying our own flesh every day so that we can carry the cross. Remember the song, Must Jesus Bear the Cross Alone and All the World Go Free? No, there's a cross for everyone, and there's a cross for me. Old Tennessee Ernie Ford song. I think Elvis did it too. But this is, this is the basis of this, this silliness, where you have people that have no business talking about the Bible. Everybody should read the Bible, but there are very few people that should go out and start waving their fingers around at others saying, it's the synagogue of Satan and all this silliness. It's not what was being said. And it, it, regardless if you have a debate on what was being said, it wasn't being, nobody was talking about, nobody was talking about the, the people who have returned to Israel since 1948. A great deal of them actually came out of Turkey. A great many of them came out of Turkey. It's a, it's a land that's had a lot of different faces over the years. Referred to as Asia, partially Greek, all sorts of different things going on, but the seat of Satan, the seat of Satan in the Bible was Pergamos, and that's in Turkey. And there's also another reference in the Bible that, I want to get this right, I didn't bring it up, but uh, Jesus said, when you see the fig tree budding, you'll know my time is near. And in Cyrillic, where the 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 U.S. had a base at one time. In Cyrillic is literally the, the fig grove, the grove of figs. In Cyrillic, that's what it translates to. And there are those who have speculated that the real war, when it kicks off, is going to be from Turkey. In Cyrillic, when you see the fig tree budding, you'll know my time is near. So... um. A lot of stuff in Revelation. Not everything in Revelation, however, has to do with the end times. And in this, this is a perfect case of it. Revelation 2 and Revelation 3 is just John the Revelator writing letters to his, his contemporary church at that time. Not He wasn't talking about 2,000 years in the future. He was talking at that time about... Jews that were afraid to stand up and say, I believe, and this is what I believe, because it was easier just to mix with the world. And that is the definition of blasphemy, and that's exactly what Satan would want. So it makes sense to, to all sides. There's, there's absolutely no sense. There's, it's ridiculous, the idea that at that time, 2,000 years ago, Anybody would have pretended to be a Jew. It would be like pretending to be a Jew in World War II. How, how dumb would you have had to have been? It makes no sense to logic. But when you proceed from hate in your heart, and you say, well, the Bible says that they're God's chosen people, and that God's going to bless the Jews and curse those who curse them, i got to find some way to, to debunk that. And to... That's what these people do. Because they're trying to, to prove a secular point and trying to make the Bible agree with their hate. So once again, there's your synagogue of Satan right there. These are the people that do, these are the people that think uh, rape gets them into heaven. These are the people who think rape gets them into heaven. Let that soak in. 
So I will leave it there. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. God bless. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.